us as promised. <sighs> Navia is such a good person. Hmm. Now that the serial disappearances case has been solved, no one's going to come after us for anything. Even without Silver standing guard, we can just completely relax. Why don't we stay and rest up here for a while? Even machines and Fontaine need to stop and recharge now and then. isn't that bad. Besides, how often do we get to stay in an actual base? Oh, fine, fine. Remember that detective story Paimon read before? Well, the author is about to release a new book, so Paimon wanted to buy it as soon as it came out and have a quiet place to read it. Then it's agreed. Come on, let's get some sleep. We'll need to be up first thing in the morning to get in line and buy a copy. Paimon didn't expect that style at all. Even though it's a detective novel, it's also like a social documentary. Ooh, it's actually pretty good. No! Paimon just spends a bit more time sleeping than you, that's all! Excuse me, but do you know if the Traveler and Paimon are lodging here? Huh? Who are you? Paimon doesn't recall seeing you before. Wait, you're not here to give us trouble, are you? A blonde Traveler and a chatty little fairy. <sighs> looks like I found the place! Good thing I asked the Spina di Rosula. Seems they sent me the right way. Hey, what do you mean by chatty? Paimon's always careful not to talk too much. Most of the time, anyway. It's an honor to meet you both. I was sent from the Palais Mermonia. Monsieur Nourilet wishes to see you. It seems he has something important to discuss in person. Nourilet? He wants to see us again already? Huh. We talked so much the last time we met. Has something happened since then? I am not privy to the details. It would be best if you came to the Palais Marmonia and asked Monsieur Norvillette in person. Mm, if you say so, but... Hyman has a bad feeling about this. <sighs> now that I've delivered the message, I'll take my leave. Thanks! We haven't left the room for a few days, so we'll head over once we've freshened up a bit. Yes, I did send someone to fetch you. But as for what I'd like to discuss next... Well, I still have some reservations. Given that we've already made the trip here, you should just tell us. Bet you need us to help you with something, right? I do indeed have something I'd like to ask you to do. However, you should wait until after I tell you the details, then decide for yourselves whether you'd like to help or not. The situation is this. It has come to my attention that the Snezhnayan harbinger known as the Knave wants a diplomatic meeting with you, correct? I heard that she was originally from Fontaine, but for her to suddenly arrive here and abruptly request such a meeting like this, I sincerely advise you to refuse her invitation outright. Hmm. I'm sure you're aware that her purpose is most likely related to Child's recent predicament. We convicted one of the Snezhnayan Harbingers in a court of law, but we have yet to provide any form of detailed report on the matter. This does indeed provide an opportunity for Snezhnaya to put pressure on us. I believe we should adopt an evasive stance until we can provide a proper explanation and have a preliminary plan on how to deal with the matter. No, we shouldn't. I think we should agree to the meeting. Oh? Well, you see, we are the ones that owe an explanation. If we keep putting off the meeting, it could easily result in the problem escalating, right? It's like 
Like a fight between two friends. If they don't agree to see each other and talk in person, isn't it possible that the friendship could end entirely? Though diplomatic relations between Fontaine and Snezhnaya could be considered as friendly, it is only superficially so. You wouldn't go so far as to say that our nations are friends as you did in your example. <sighs> it was just an analogy. An analogy, okay? Moreover, even if we were to talk in person, if we don't have sufficient information prepared, it is quite possible the result wouldn't be restored relations, but a complete falling out. Hmm... I don't think we should overthink those possibilities yet. <clears throat> Even if the logic of the Divine is not immediately apparent, its wisdom will only be revealed with time. Besides, you'll be at the meeting. If any problems do pop up, you'll have no problem navigating them. I must clarify that interacting and communicating with people outside of court is not my cup of tea. It seems you think too much of me. But more importantly, when did I agree to join the meeting with you? <laughs> you mean you won't come? No, 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 that, that won't do! I can't go to the meeting alone! You have to accompany me! I must take you with me! Lady Farina, could there be something else regarding this matter that is being kept from me? No, not at all. Look, I am the Hydro Archon of Fontaine, Fusilor, the god of justice who is loved and adored by many. So I only hope that justice will be served in this matter. Don't overthink it. I'll go find someone to arrange the meeting. <sighs> Though it could officially be considered a diplomatic conference, I prefer to see our meeting today as an ordinary tea party. I assume you see it the same way, Miss Farina? Hmm. Lady Farina? Uh, oh! <laughs> yes, yes, that's right. Just like you said, a tea party. <laughs> I should thank you for providing the pastries. They look delectable. To make this tea party even more lively, I've invited someone else to join us today. It's a pleasure to meet you, Monsieur Nuvillette. I was born in Fontaine, so naturally, there's no need to introduce the nation's revered Eudex to me. Hello. The pleasure is also mine. First, I would like to thank the two of you. I'm often away on business outside of Fontaine, and I'm told that the children of the House of the Hearth have been well taken care of by you. Uh... Oh, I'm not referring to when my children, Linny and Lynette, were falsely accused by you. Please don't misunderstand. The children of the House of the Hearth are often misunderstood. Perhaps due to the reputation of the Fatui. There's no getting around that. All I meant to say is that Fontaine has been stable in recent years. The people are well off and the children lead happy, fulfilled lives. That is something truly worth cherishing, and no one wishes to disrupt such peace. Now then, you have come regarding the matter of child, correct? Well, yes. It appears the ever-busy Eudex Nouvellet doesn't wish to waste time with diplomatic pleasantries, and hopes that we can get straight to the point of our talk. Yes, as you surmised, understanding child's situation is indeed one of the goals of this trip. As we are both diplomats from Snezhnaya as well as Fatui Harbingers, Child and I have always been colleagues. Were anything to happen in Fontaine, each of us would serve as the other's attorney to resolve the issue. So now, in my capacity as his attorney, I request that child be turned over to Snezhnaya. We have a responsibility to cooperate with Fontaine, and resolve what has happened to him together. The rules governing attorneys only apply before a trial has concluded. Since a verdict has already been rendered, we see the case as settled. I apologize for being unable to grant your request. 
an outright refusal. Very well. I respect all the rules of Fontaine's courts, just as I respect you as Chief Justice. Okay, why don't we back up a step? You don't need to transfer Child to us. I only request to enter the Fortress of Meripede to see Child and confirm his condition. It's not like you couldn't even manage to fulfill a simple request like that. Right, Miss Farina? Uh, um, about that. The Fortress of Meripede has always been completely autonomous. Even we have no authority to interfere there, and diplomatic issues do not suffice as an excuse. However, if you absolutely must confirm the situation of the Harbinger, I have a proposal. The knave showed up already? Well, Linny did say that Father will be returning soon. We didn't even know that Lenny was from the House of the Hearth at the time, so we kinda overlooked that information. Yes, thank you for your kind advice. I'm well aware of the situation. I also noticed that Lady Farina acts a little odd and unnatural whenever I bring up matters related to the Knave. Could the Knave be... threatening Lady Farina or something? If that were the case, then why wouldn't Lady Farina inform me? And what means could the Knave possibly have to twist the arm of an Archon? Hmm... So maybe that's not very likely. Even though Farina can act a little weird at times, she's still an Archon. In reality, this problem is even more thorny than it appears. According to reports from the Fortress of Meripede, Child recently disappeared under mysterious circumstances. The details are still unclear. We cannot rule out an escape, but there have also been no reports of him outside of the Fortress of Meripede. Special guards oversee the fortress, and its internal systems are extensive. Combined with the special characteristics of the surrounding terrain, an escape should not be possible. I suspect that there's something else behind Child's disappearance. I was only willing to share this information with you because you are friends of Child, and it is my duty to see justice done. So this is what you wanted to see us about before? Yes. I would like you to go to the Fortress of Meripede and investigate Child's disappearance. This was my proposal during our meeting with the Knave. Rather than allowing her to intervene, I offered to send someone to find out about Child's situation and report back to her in detail. The Knave did not seem satisfied by my proposal, but she still agreed to go along with it for the time being. Her words were, We will talk more once we have that report. So that means we bought ourselves some time! Firstly, you're already acquainted with Child. Your eyes may discern relevant details there that others would miss. And secondly, is the consideration of the unique nature of the Fortress of Meripede. Prison? I would not define it so crudely. The Fortress of Meripede is not affiliated with the court system of Fontaine on paper. It has always existed as an autonomous entity. Early in Fontaine's history, criminals were punished with exile, not imprisonment. Even today, sentences against convicted criminals still include exile, just as before. The Fortress of Meripede may seem like a prison, but it should in fact be regarded as a gathering place for exiles. All we do is dispatch guards to keep watch and help maintain security, but we have no right to get involved with any other matters. Although I do have a personal relationship with the administrator there, neither myself nor the courts have the right to be directly involved with the investigation, no matter how serious the grounds. Now, that's why you need us to conduct our own investigation as a third party, right? Correct. I will arrange false charges against you so that you may secretly investigate inside the fortress during your detention. This will save us a lot of unnecessary trouble. So, are you two willing to accept my proposal? Yeah, no matter how you look at it, it seems we're the best 
choice. Alright, we hereby accept this difficult task. Uh, reluctantly. You two have my sincere thanks. This matter is of critical importance to Fontaine's current situation. Also, I hope that both of you can keep this operation a secret. We will rendezvous at the Fortress of Meropede's entrance on Erinaeus once you've prepared yourselves. I will arrange for someone to take you inside. Prepared ourselves? Uh, is there something we need to prepare? Perhaps you could enjoy a good meal and have a nice bath. I'm afraid that living conditions inside the fortress are nothing like those on the outside world. Oh, right! Even though we'll be there on trumped-up charges, we'll be in prison for real. Uh... On second thought, is it too late to back out? Please do not worry. Since you are sacrificing both your time and quality of life for the sake of delivering this report, you will be compensated according to the highest standards permitted to legal staff, regardless of the outcome. Now that's more like it! Come on, Traveler! Let's go eat the best meal we can find! We'll eat so much that we won't need to eat another meal for a whole month! Your treat! Are you leaving now? In that case, please take this cake as a token of my personal gratitude. was pretty good. But as soon as Paimon remembered that we we're about to go to prison, Paimon's stomach suddenly became completely empty. Now that Paimon thinks about it, we've always been super careful ever since we arrived in Fontaine. Just to avoid breaking any strange laws here. But here we are, about to willingly send ourselves off to the Fortress of Meropede. Hmm, maybe this is what they call fate. <sighs> Let's just try our best to investigate everything quickly once we get there. Paimon doesn't want to stay in prison too long. Oh, what is that I hear? Is it the taste of a breaking story? Hey! You can't hear a taste! And what are you doing here, Charlotte? Oh, don't remind me. I invited an eyewitness to a case to eat here, and I was planning to get some great material out of him. But he didn't even show up! Ah, calm down, calm down. This is nothing new. As a journalist, you should be used to this by now. As long as you can score some juicy tidbits from the Traveler, you might still be able to recover the cost of the meal. Uh, you know we can still hear you, Charlotte. <laughs> uh, never mind, it's nothing. I just heard you mention the Fortress of Meripede. You didn't commit a crime, did you? Please tell me all about it. No way! We would never! We're just going there to... Uh... Um... To... Oh no, Paimon almost forgot that Nevelette told us to keep it a secret! Huh? You're being arrested for that? Oh, but now that I think about it, I suppose that's not completely unreasonable. That's pretty despicable, almost as offensive as committing theft. Oh, you mean Paima really did something that serious? Sorry, Paima really messed up. Uh, well, in that case, it's nothing particularly newsworthy after all. Oh, how disappointing. Oh, right. There's still a chance. Uh, since you're going to be at the Fortress of Meripede, would you be willing to help me gather some material for a story? Um, about that, uh, Paimon doesn't think we'll have any time. Oh, it's nothing difficult. All you have to do is think of a way to get some time face to face with the Warden of the Fortress. He was awarded the honorary title of Duke in Fontaine. Sounds really cool, huh? Only those who have made significant contributions to the nation have been conferred this title. It's incredibly rare. On top of that, the Fortress of Meripede has never been under the jurisdiction of the courts. Practically nobody, including journalists like me, knows anything about the person in charge there. Oh, if I could write an exclusive article about him, 
I bet it would sell a boatload of papers. You make it sound easy, but it really depends. Of course. I wouldn't ask you to do it for free. So this meal is on me. All right, you got a deal. We'll do anything you want. <laughs> then it's settled. The food should be here any second, right? Huh? Wait, just how much did you order? You have come, just as promised. Yes, this is the one and only entrance to the fortress of Meripede from Erinaeus. Careful, you may want to step back a bit. Whoa! So you have to go down from here? Is the prison underwater? Utilizing both the barrier of the water as well as the fear humans have of the depths, the fortress of Meripede is naturally the perfect place to confine and guard criminals. But do not worry. It is not nearly as frightening inside as you may think. You will see for yourselves once you are down there. Uh, Paimon hopes you're right. Don't know about you, but just thinking about being at the bottom of the sea like that gives Paimon the heebie-jeebies. Oh, and there's one more thing. I mentioned that I have had personal dealings with the administrator of the fortress, Rithesley. He's a very shrewd fellow. Yeah, we are him too. He's that Duke, right? Correct. He is the highest ranking manager of the underwater prison. Even though you are going there to investigate at my behest, it would behoove you to avoid any confrontation with him or any of his subordinates. The Duke rarely ever leaves the Fortress of Meripede, but that does not mean he is not privy to all that is happening inside and outside the fortress. He is quiet, but not unaware. So please bear that in mind. All right. That's about all the time that we have to talk privately. I'm counting on you two. Don't worry. We won't let you down. Good. <clears throat> Madeline! I'm here, Monsieur Nervalet. These two are the newest convicts, I presume? <laughs> Don't worry. They won't escape on my watch. <laughs> Like we would try. Please follow me, you two. I'll process your paperwork for entering the Fortress of Meripede. <sighs> oh, it's you, Madeline. Why'd they make you make the trip down here today? Monsieur Nervalet personally requested I escort these two convicts. I suppose he was concerned others might not be up to the task. <laughs> well now, aren't you the lucky one? Must be nice to be on good terms with the big shots like the Chief Justice. The only people I get to see every day are the new inmates. Well, have you tried service with a smile? Who knows, it might help your professional reputation. <laughs> yeah right, as if. Every criminal comes through here looking miserable. How can I smile with such a toxic work environment? And even if I did smile at them, the convicts would probably just think that I'm some freak getting some kind of twisted enjoyment from their pain. Oh, she's got a point. Well, I've finished transferring you. You two will register here, and Moret will guide you through the remaining procedures. <sighs> yep, I'll take it from here. You head on back to that bright and sunny world above. Okay, let me see. You are the Traveler and Paimon, correct? That would be us! Let me confirm your charges and sentence. Let's see. You two are charged with... Eating a cake specially prepared for the Archon by a Snezhnayan envoy without the Archon's permission, thereby incapacitating the political center of Fontaine for a brief period. Sentence... 45 days? Huh? Wait... You mean the cake that Nervalet gave us was... Just looking at the charges, it seems you two are capable of causing some serious trouble. 
And considering how fond Lady Furina is of sweets, this crime is tantamount to trying to assassinate the Hydro Archon herself. Now I've seen everything. <laughs> anyway, we still need to finish processing you before you can enter the Fortress of Meripede. Please stand in front of the board over there. I'll take your mug shots with my camera. Oh, all right. But be sure to catch Paimon's good side. And we're done. Thank you for your cooperation. Next, someone will be along to guide you inside the fortress. Please be sure to cherish this opportunity for rebirth. Huh? Rebirth? Isn't that a little much? We're only gonna be here for 45 days! You two are the new inmates, right? Follow me. Oh, okay! Paimon is Paimon and this is the Traveler! Save it. Not like I'll remember your names. Move it. Why should I tell you anything? What's in it for me? <sighs> this is exactly why I can't stand you fish. I wouldn't even be doing this if it weren't for the credit coupons. Credit coupons? Alright, seeing as you're not the annoying kind that's getting dragged in here crying and blubbering, I guess I can tell you a few things. But next time... It'll cost you some coupons. Mora means nothing here. Here, we use credit coupons. Coupons can get you almost anything in the Fortress of Meripede. Desires? Fulfilled. You want power? No problem. Coupons can even change fate itself. So, credit coupons are a currency that can only be used here? It's not as simple as that. Like Moret said, Everyone gets a chance at rebirth. No matter how much money or power you had before, it means nothing once you set foot inside the Fortress of Meripede. You have to start over and earn your coupons. Everyone starts from the same place, and you have a chance at a new, less terrible life. I guess that's the real purpose of the coupons. They symbolize true fairness and true justice. And this is also exactly why so many criminals choose not to return to the outside world, even after they've served their sentence. Oh, so that's what the Fortress of Meripede is like. Huh, Paimo was under the impression that it'd be more like a prison. It certainly ain't all sunshine and roses here, but it's also not the worst place to be. You'd better take a good look at the scenery now. It'll be the last chance you get for a while. After being away from the sunlight for so long, even the terrifying depths of the sea start to feel like home. It just stops feeling oppressive, you know? Oh, I'm actually an inmate like you two. Welcoming newcomers is a job I've picked up to earn some extra coupons. Uh, why aren't you answering us again? I've told you enough for free. 
Any more info is gonna cost ya. So all you care about is Mora! Wait, no. Coupons? Almost there. It's down through here. Your turn to give it a try. <laughs>